All right. Well, good morning. It's Friday morning, and I'm here with my friend Laura Mae Culver from No Self Services. And the reason why we're recording this and sharing today is I'm fortunate that Laura Mae is my friend, and we've been chatting the last few weeks and uh, just talking about self care and the the pressures that have been being felt by the nonprofit sector. And last week when we talked, I said, I need to share you <laughs> with other people because our conversations have been so helpful to me. So luckily she agreed to uh, record today's chat and share some of the things that we've talked about. So Laura May, how, with your experience, how is sort of the current circumstances and the stresses that we've been feeling different in the nonprofit sector? Well, and first of all, just so you know, um, a bit of my background is uh, I'm as a clinical social worker, I've been in the, the biz for over 20 years, and I call it that just for fun, but uh, I'm walking beside and, and, and in service as a social worker. And so I understand that the training is similar in nonprofit to answer your question Ooh, that, yeah. um, that our training in nonprofit is very much a, about giving to others and, and scanning and screening ourselves for needs of others, people outside of ourselves. And so it's embedded in, in, in everything we do in our mission statement, our value statement, why we're in, in interested in being a service provider in and of itself says, how can I help? And it's rare that within the training that, that we really have an opportunity um, to remember, because the training is to look after yourself first, but we don't, it, it tends to move to let's look for others, right? The mandate, the vision, the mission, of course, that's what it's all about. The difficulty is that we have to take care of ourselves first in order to be able to show up in a sustainable way uh, for ourselves, our home life, whatever that is, whether it's looking just after ourselves, whether it's looking after other people, running, we talked about it last time, Glenna, running a, you know, almost like your little campsite, right? Making sure your little campsite is all working well. And it doesn't have to be working really well, especially right now. And we can talk a little bit about that, the uniqueness of the, of the moment. Uh, but it still, it needs to have our care first. And, and so that's where we're finding, you know, the strain and the, and the difficulty of anyone who is in the giving field, whether you're a frontline worker, you know, in a hospital, a frontline worker in a social work setting, psychology setting, anything that's about people and giving back community setting, nonprofit. Uh, it's like a, there are two steps to that self-care, extra steps to that self-care because of that wonderful, beautiful service mindset. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it makes me think of the, you know, the, the, the age old, like you've got to put on your oxygen mask before you, you put on others. Right. So, and you know, that's interesting because I, I'd love to talk about that a little bit okay? because I don't know if everybody knows that one. And if they do, I, I'm pretty sure we need to hear it again. Uh, you're in an airplane, right? And there's mm -hmm. an emergency bell that goes off and everybody's going to be fine. Everybody's okay. But the rule is that the oxygen masks come down in that emergency situation or in that time of need. And that if you were with uh, someone of vulnerability with you, someone who was leaning on you, a vulnerable person leaning on you, we ask the question, who do you put the mask on first, yourself or the vulnerable person, whether it's a baby or it's, you know, someone in your care. And time and time again, Glenna, the answer is, well, the vulnerable person, 
because they're vulnerable. And then we play it out and we say, okay, let's really think about this. So if you put it on the vulnerable person first, and so you're not getting oxygen, what happens to you? Oh, well, then I run out of oxygen. And then what happens to the vulnerable person if they're leaning on you? Oh yeah, they run out of oxygen as well. Oh, so then neither one of you have oxygen any longer, correct? <laughs> and then, oh, good point. So the person who has been leaned on in the service sector in whatever way you see that or understand that in your reality right now, you must put, you know, a mask and mask, right? <laughs> the pandemic mask. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that mask as I'm looking after myself, I have to look after me first and then I can show up in the world with oxygen, mm -hmm. with breath, with the ability to give back, but yeah. not before mm -hmm. because you are now not receiving oxygen. Yeah. And if you're not, then obviously, right. But we're not taught that we're taught, you know, especially in the service se sector, we're taught um, that, that it's okay to run on empty and just share the fumes. Yeah. It's just the way it's been built for a long, long time. And so it's not going to change overnight in that way. So we need to look at what we're, we've been trained and how we've seen ourselves up to this point. And then, okay, how can we slowly start looking at ourselves as self-care, holistic care of self, mind, body, spirit, sustainably, or even in, in permaculture, regeneratively, like regeneration mm -hmm. means that it's, it, it regenerates itself as opposed to having to have something come in and help it along. You, you plant the seeds so they regenerate. Sustainability and regeneration are, are, are words that we can apply to our social, you know, and our psychological well-being, mm -hmm. as well as our literal organic farming. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that impacted me most in one of our recent conversations was just about that we really need to just simplify yes our lives and self-care and I think that you know when you say just now about that we're used to kind of just running on empty and as we joined our call today I said I'm exhausted so when I'm not feeling like I have enough hours in the day for self-care um, and I think a lot of people are probably feeling that way mm -hmm. how do we how do we fit that in when so that's, so and that's a great question. So I, I, first of all, want to say, and I'm glad we talked about remembering that you're in this service industry and that there's a mindset that comes with it. That's the first step. So reminding yourself yeah. of that. And then also we're in a pandemic and there's no rule book. We're not going into the caves of the Himalayas and finding the scrolls that give us the message of how to handle this. We only have what we knew before the pandemic came. And we're all just walking each other home through this. And so we, what's one of my friends and I were talking about with the self-care and support, she's a psychologist in the community. And we were talking about the importance of if we have that perfectionist tendency, especially to move it back to basics. So are you eating? Are you sleeping? Are you laughing? Are you enjoying even the simplest of things? Are you breathing? Are you t stopping? And just taking a nice deep breath. Are you just making sure the basics are covered right now, that there's no deluxe right now. There's no, um, you know, when you, when you go out and you, and you buy the deluxe package, it's bells and whistles and cherries on top, generally speaking. And in that perfectionist tendency uh, and that giving back mindset, we tend to default back to, I have to do COVID right. I have to do it right. I have to do it perfectly. I have, I have to know what I'm doing. And there are so many areas that we care give, you know, in our homes, in our backyards, in our routines, in our traditions, in our, 
if we're in sandwich gener generations, then it's how do we how we're caregiving for our extended families, our children, our parents, our you know it just goes on and on and on. And so if you do have all those tugs right now, even if you just have the tug of running a household for yourself, it's okay to go basic. Mm -hmm. There'll be time for deluxe. And if you find you have the energy to do a bit of deluxe for yourself, great. But ultimately the basic is what's sustainable and regenerative in a time when we're uncertain, in a time when we're running a marathon, we're working that hard energetically, we're working that hard emotionally, we're working that hard as a marathon, uh, we're working that hard in our work and the expectations, et cetera, et cetera. And we don't know the finish line mm -hmm. because it's uncertain. So for us to be running, thinking, because in a marathon, you pace yourself, it, but you also know when you're going to be ending, when it's going to change again. And right now we don't know. So to sustain that energy, to, to, to be able to, as best as possible. And this isn't like rules for self-care. You have to follow these now. <laughs> these are just suggestions and, yeah. and, and reminders of gentleness around this gentleness to self, gentleness with the folks around you, um, catching yourself when you're not feeling good about something and just noticing and just, ah, but I'm pacing myself. That's a wonderful way to self-talk right now. I'm pacing myself. It's okay to pace myself. It's okay to just slow it down and make sure the basics are happening. You know, you brush your teeth, you know, you wash your face, you make sure you're clean, relatively clean, you know, all those things. I know that sounds almost um, condescending in some ways, but at the same time, I need to hear it. We have, we might have skill set out the wazoo right now. And yet we all need to hear, it's okay to slow down. It's okay to breathe. It's okay to look after yourself and to look at it from the place of, it's okay to be a little nervous about the being uncertain. That's, it's okay. We're in a pandemic, slow down and lean on each other. So the other analogy I thought would be helpful today is the idea of, of the battery on our phones. Now we plug our battery in, correct? Yeah. At the end of the day, we're juicing it up. Why? Because it was utilized all day long. And it's probably going to go to like a bar that's quite low if we don't. And so there's this lovely little cartoon of a person and there's a red line at the bottom of the person and there's a phone and there's a red line at the bottom of the phone and, and people would never let the phone yeah. get to a red line, but they'll let themselves get to the red line or, yeah. or, or the, that, you know, there's pressure. We give each other pressure on that too. It's, it's also that check, check, recheck around community supports and that we can also make sure that we're, oh, did I just, are you in the red zone? Like, are you at that battery recharge time? So it's that allowing ourselves, giving ourselves permission to check in. Hmm, where am I at in my battery? How many bars do I have on my battery? And is it time for me to, excuse myself from the meeting, go to the washroom, take a few extra. You don't have to go to the washroom, go to the washroom. You can just go to the washroom, close the door, breathe, reevaluate. You know, as Eckhart Tolle of A New Earth and Power of Now talks about just one deep conscious breath to just bring you back into the moment can do this amazing, you know, calibration, integration of wholeness. Okay, I'm good. Okay. And then moving forward once again, because I know you guys, I know the pace is just, there's no, there's no ceiling to the pace you guys are at. We're all at, but especially in the nonprofit sector and the giving back in the frontline sector, right? Mm -hmm. So 
So those are a couple of tips around that. When we were talking about basics, like, are you eating? Are you sleeping? Are you getting a bit of exercise? And that can be throw on a couple of your favorite songs and do a little jig around your living room. I, I said this week, I said uh, every day I'm getting outside. That's for sure. I'm going to go out and it's, and it's freezing outside. And I have not done that. <laughs> I almost did all week, but I missed two days. Yeah. I'm doing well, the I best think, I can. Yeah. And I, I, that's totally me too. And that it's that perfectionist, you know, cause it's soon at the end of the week, it's like, okay, I'm exhausted. So next week I got to do better at self-care. So I'm going to exercise every single day. I'm going to make sure I'm eating more vegetables. I'm going to, and it becomes, you know, this list of 20 things that I need to do. And then I love the idea of even it just going as basic as the, my breath. Cause that's something that I'm not doing during the day of just stepping away and just taking a deep breath. Like it can't get more basic than that. But yeah, I, I have had days where I probably haven't taken a deep breath, a good deep breath all day. And it's just go, 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 go. It's interesting. I remember learning uh, quite a few years ago, we went and visited um, one of uh, rehab, one of the rehab centers um, after uh, uh, injury. And one of the points that they made was the importance of the seatbelt. And, and I, I'll never forget, it was such a simple message, but so profound. They said it takes, it takes less than 30 seconds to make that click, to put it over your shoulder and click it in. And you would not, not do that for your little in the back seat. You would put the harness on and you would take that 30 seconds and you would put the harness on and you would click it and you would check it. And you would check, you know, click, click, right? You would check it. You'd make sure it was safe. That's only 30 seconds. And I've never forgotten that around how long does it actually, <clears throat> pardon me, how long does it actually take for us to just stop, look out the window or look at a, at a friend with a smiling face and just breathe in and breathe out. It, we can do it. We can, or when we're putting our seatbelt on. <sighs> Click. The other uh, suggestion with Eckhart Tolle, and if you ever get a chance to check out his work, it's beautiful work around mindfulness and anxiety and all sorts of things right now. He's doing a lot of speaking and even his past work uh, all fits right now. Eckhart Tolle talks about... Um, you know that when the phone rings or you get a message to breathe first before you answer it. It only, it's such a short time. You think, oh my gosh, I'm making this person wait. But actually it's a very, very, very short period of time. You just, it's ringing, it's ringing. And now I answer it. And now I check the email and now I do the next thing. So it's just, it's something to just start maybe asking yourself, hmm, how can I put a couple of those moments into my, into yeah. my day for me? Yeah. It's all about me and it can be, it's allowed to make yes. it about what do I need right now? What do I need right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that we're keeping it simple. I love that advice. Thank you. Is there any last, last no. thoughts that you wanted to add, Laura May? A couple of little things you can do is you can, uh, you can assess what's actually burning your energy. And in some of the masterminding work that we've done before, I remember talking about what we call leaky holes. Yeah. And that think of your leaky hole as like a colander. When you wash your vegetables or your fruits, you have a colander, you put it all in and then you maybe wash it up and the holes, you know, leak the water out the bottom. Well, we can do that energetically where we have a colander and there are holes of leaky energy, things like being on social media, um, you know, being on the news um, too much, you know, like I get the check-in once in a while, but ultimately we don't have to be on there every single day. Um, just make a list of the things that are leaking your energy that you're allowed to, to, to close those holes so that you have energy for the things that, put the bars back up on your energy level as opposed to taking. So what's leaking your energy is, is a step. Um, and then 
And then from that, you say, okay, what am I not going to do anymore? Even if it's just one or two things at a time, there's what am I not going to do anymore? Okay. I'm actually not going to check my phone when I'm really tired. That's an example. And the reason that I suggest that is because we're so vulnerable when we're tired. And when you get on social media, it is not designed to make you feel good. Unless you've been really careful and all your sites are all good news today and the yeah. Greater Good Science Center. If you haven't filtered your phone, then you're getting all the sensationalized information that when you're vulnerable etches deeply more deeply into you and causes drain of the battery. Mm -hmm. So just allowing yourself to say, okay, I'm hmm, maybe I could look at what is coming at me, what what I'm, you know, what is affecting me, what's coming at me. And then what would I what could I do to change the trajectory of that of that battery? How do I fill my battery? And then, yeah, what's your happy, right? Like little things like, do you hike in the woods? Do you watch the birds at the feeder? Do you, um, you know, do you call a friend? Uh, do you play trivia? Do you, you know, do you laugh? Do you watch Shit's Creek? Uh, anyone who wants to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, we're watching that right now too. And uh, we're kind of late to the game, but I, I found it totally like it's just, the laughter and the, it's perfect for right now, I feel, you know, like, and it's short. So you can kind of fit in an episode somewhere in your day. And it's a yeah. great one. So those, so what works for you around that, right? What is yeah. your humor? What makes you laugh? What makes you laugh? What gives you joy? And it doesn't have to be complicated. It, it can be the some hot, a cup of hot tea or, uh, you know, that, you know, dancing around your living room to your favorite song. It's amazing what music can do to shift your energy. And then I wanted to sum up, make sure that I say this, that, and if you don't get to the self-care, we don't want you to be upset with yourself because you didn't do your self-care. Yeah. That ends up being the double whammy, yes. you know, when are we winning here? <laughs> if we're mad at ourselves because we didn't do what we said we were going to do, because that's okay too, because we're in a pandemic and we don't know, and we need to pace ourselves and it's okay to not be okay. So if you're ever not okay and you really need support, there are so many supports available. And I, I would encourage everyone to reach out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's, there are so many different ways to reach out, but if you, you know, are really finding that you're, you're having a tough time or that you're concerned about a family or friend, family member or friend, uh, please reach out to your, to your local community uh, resources. And if you need to know more about what those are, Glenna, I'm sure you could support too. So, yeah, thank you for yeah. mentioning that. And that's something that we've been talking about more just with our, our staff team that we need to be sharing that message too, about, you know, the supports and that, um, you know, that there are supports out there and to reach out, check in with each other, let's reach out and, recognize that it I love that you said recognize that it's okay to not feel okay and we've had that discussion around our our house even where yeah if we're gonna have bad days let's support each other and if it gets to the you know if you're we're feeling like we need help outside of just supporting each other there's there's places we can go for for extra help and that's okay absolutely absolutely well thank you so much for sharing your gifts with us today that was oh really my pleasure I'm so happy amazing. as my phone rings like <laughs> it's a symbol for the work that we're doing <laughs> yes yes well, thank you so much I'm going to we'll we'll sign off officially here okay and, um